All right. Who wants to make some Damascus? I do. Got to take her. Let's make some Damascus. All right, we're going to make some Damascus. So I've already got the pieces cut out. It's relatively simple. Essentially, you just want to cut out about five to six inches in length. Enough of them to make a big billet. It really depends on the thickness of the steel as to how many layers you're going to have. This one, I believe, is 16th inch. That's 15 and 20. This is 1080. And this is 8th inch. And then I've also got some 8th inch 15 and 20 right here. So two different thicknesses of 15 and 20 and then the 1080. And I'm going to attempt to make some W's, which is basically the basis of a lot of different mosaic patterns. So essentially what we're going to do is after we have these cut out and cleaned up, we're just going to alternate layers between the 1080 and the 15 and 20. And then once we have our desired billet height or thickness, we're going to MIG weld these together, heat it up, and then forge weld them together. And then we're going to draw it out into a rectangular bar, and then we're going to turn it. And then we're going to turn it and put it in the squaring dies and smash the corners in and make it so we've basically turned that square into a diamond. So it would be a square if you turned it 90 degrees. Then once we've done that, we draw it out into a bar, we recut it, clean it, and restack it, and then forge weld it again. From there, you can tile the W's or whatever you're gonna do with it, but we're gonna twist it and use that as the pattern. I needed a few more pieces of 1080 so I cut a few and cleaned them up so now all we need to do is stack these There we go, now we've got our billet. And then this billet, usually try to get them around four inches thick. And we're only at four and a quarter, or three and a quarter, but we're good with that. After I do my first restack, I'll separate the layers with these other pieces of 15 and 20, kind of add a little something to the pattern. So now we just need to get this clamped and then MIG welded. When clamping these up, you can do, use a, a few different devices. Have these C clamps, have a little vise. I prefer using the vise because I feel like it gives me a tighter hold all the way across.
so I've got the billet all MIG welded. And if you're wondering by these beautiful welds, if I'm a welder by trade, well, the answer is no. So when I weld these, I only weld the first, usually I just do the first couple layers because these thin layers, when they heat up, they'll separate from the rest of the billet, but in the middle they won't, you know, there's enough mass here that's not going to separate. So just to eliminate some of the cleanup, I just usually weld, you know, the first three or four layers. I got a little crazy on this one, but it doesn't matter. When you weld your stick on, when you're, when you're doing, say, a random pattern Damascus, where you're just gonna leave the layers flat, you can use square or round, but where I'm gonna be smashing down this layer and then turning it to try to manipulate the layers, I put a square piece on, so when I do this, I can keep track of the square bar, you know, where you turn it. If it's round, you have no idea where's where on the bar, but with a square bar, you can tell when you've put it on an angle to make that flat that way. So it makes it easier to keep track of things. My next step is I will soak this billet in kerosene. What this does is the kerosene will get between the layers and when you put it into the forge, the kerosene will burn out any impurities that are in between all the layers. This essentially makes it so you don't have to use any flux. Now if you pull it out and try to smash the layers down to flatten them, the scale is going to build up in between the layers and then you're going to have a harder time forge welding it unless you put flux on it to clean out the layers. So this makes it so you can do a billet without adding flux, which essentially is an impurity and it makes it more likely to have a failed weld. So what I'll do is I will light the forge now and then this will just soak until the forge is up to heat and then we'll be able to put it in the forge and get ready for the forge welding. Okay, we're about ready to put this thing in the forge. As far as temperatures go, ideally you want to be between 2100 degrees and 2200 degrees. 2150 is perfect. If you don't have a temperature controlled forge, it makes it really hard to hit that specific temperature. So get where you can. I have a little thermocouple that helps me tell what the temperature is and I can adjust it from there. But once you get up to like 2300 degrees and higher, you kind of start destroying the grain structure in the steel. So if you can, stay below that. And in we go. Some flames going. Close it up, give it. I usually come back in about five, 10 minutes and I'll flip it like a steak. And then when you think it's ready, general rule of thumb is give it about five more minutes because you want the middle of that billet to be just as hot as the outside. So make sure you give it plenty of time. 15, 20 minutes should be plenty of time sometimes quicker. All right, we're ready for this heat. Looks like it's up to temperature. So this first pass, we're just going to take a few small bites just to get these welds set. And then we're gonna put it right back into the forge and let it get up to heat again. back in the forge. Okay, I think we're ready for 
the second heat. We're gonna do basically the same thing we did on the first, just some small bites. And then after that, the weld should probably be perfectly set and we can start drawing. good to keep your billets clean. All right, we're gonna start drawing this out a little bit, but I don't wanna draw it out too much because I'm gonna use squaring dies to smash the corners in. So what we'll do is we'll draw it out a little bit and flip it on its side and kind of smash everything down that way too. And that way we can get it to the size we're gonna want for the squaring dies. So we're about ready to start manipulating this pattern. Now let's pretend this is the billet. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this thing and we wanna essentially make it a square this way. So what we're gonna do is, if you wanna use flat dies, you can. All you'll have to do is turn it on its edges, on its corners, its bias, whatever you wanna call it, and start smashing it down with the flat dies. So you'll do this, and then you'll put it there, and then you'll put it there, and you'll put it there until you've essentially flattened this side and made this side into a peak. But because I have some squaring dies I made, I'm just gonna put my bar in like this and it's gonna smash all four corners, all four corners at the same time. And when we do this enough, it's gonna turn this into that. I'm hoping that all makes sense. my flat dies back on because my square dies aren't quite big enough for this size of billet. there slowly but surely. If I could use the drawing dies, it would make this process a lot faster, but I want the material not to just move in one direction. I want it to spread all four directions just to get the pattern kind of where we want it. Trying to get this down to my final dimensions now. So I have my kiss blocks in here. Falling out on me. about 
one and a half wide and then about five eighths of an inch. Five eighths of an inch thick. Got the thickness down, the dimensions right. I just need to straighten this up. And then we just have to let this cool. As soon as it cools, we can Cut it up, grind it, grind all the forge scale off, and then restack it and reweld it. So it's all cooled off, and we're able to handle it a little bit. So now we need to cut this thing up into sections, clean it up, restack it, weld it. So first thing we want to do is decide where we need to get rid of the ends because these ends are always full of delaminations. We have to figure out where to chop this off so that we get rid of all the delaminations. And this side actually looks pretty good. So we're just gonna say about there. Make us a nice straight line. And then on the other side, this side's actually pretty gross. So we have to cut about up to there. And then we'll go cut this off really quick. So the ends are gone. And now what we need to do is break this up into like maybe five or six pieces. So they make these really cool tools. They're called equal space dividers or something like that. But anyway, they're basically an accordion tool that has six or seven different points and you just extend it from end to end and it'll automatically give you the spacing, which is pretty cool. But because I don't have one, I'm just gonna measure. So we're about 24 and a quarter. Sometimes the math is a little more difficult, but so if we just mark, Every four inches, we're going to have about what we need. If you have a little bit of waste, um, it won't be the end of the world, I promise. And I just use a straight edge. Just get some nice straight lines on here. got these on the surface grinder uh, we'll be able to do about three of them at a time so a couple couple rolls through this thing and we'll have some nice clean flat pieces maybe
And I cleaned up the ends on these bars and I'm going to plop them in some ferric just so I can see the pattern and line up the pattern so they match before I weld them up. So got a lot of little wavy lines in there. I got them all lined up so that they're doing this instead of that and then that and then that. So with this, I'll be able to go over and MIG weld them up and put them back in the kerosene, let them soak for a minute while the forge heats up. And then we get to do this one more time. And back into the kerosene for a little soak. And I don't know if you could tell, but I actually welded a piece of 1 16th, sorry, 1 8th inch, 15 and 20 between each of those layers. So that might make the pattern a little more interesting. And light the forge back up. And back into the forge. And back into the press. All right, I've got this thing squared up and drawn out. But what I want to do is knock the corners off of this bar. So when I twist it, the corners aren't so aggressive. So while we're waiting for this bar to heat back up so I can do the twist, I'm going to show you what I use to actually twist this. I've tried a few different things. I have this, which it works okay for really small stuff, but as you can see, I just bent the bar. And then I have a bigger version of this with a, uh, a big pipe wrench that doesn't have the, the grip, whatever the crap that's called, on the teeth. But the problem with that is that you have to hold pressure on one side so the whole thing doesn't just fall off. So I came up with this, which is basically one inch square tube. And then I have a one inch piece on this side so I can fit about three quarter inch square inside of there. And then this side, um, you can use one and a quarter with eighth inch wall and it'll give you an inch, but I had a bigger piece. So I just welded this up so it fit one inch. Anyway, this works really well because it'll stay on there as you're twisting it, even if you release both hands. I think we have a pretty even heat here. Uh, we're going to do this in a couple sections just because it's such a long bar and my forge isn't long enough. So if you don't have a press, you can lock this down in your bench vise and it'll be good. And then just keep track of how many turns you do. That way you get the same all the way around. So we're gonna do this section, and we'll do this section, and then we'll do this section up here.
All right, here we are, all twisted up. Pretty uniform, not perfect, but pretty close. So I did 10 full twists in each section. So overall, the whole bar is 10, 10 full twists. And then I cut the end off and did a little etch. Not entirely sure if you can see that, because I can't on my monitor. But that's what we got right now. Obviously the, the pattern isn't gonna look like that on the knife, but that's what we got here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, make two of my little neck knives and I'm gonna make them out of this bar and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna forge one and then the other one I'm just gonna cut out to see how it affects the pattern. So this video, we're done. Kind of walk you through making the Damascus and then the next video or two, I'll get the knives done and then you can see the pattern when it's completed on the knife. All right, that should be a little better. Now we can see the pattern. <laughs> 